Hi, I'm Jessica Mack from Brown Paper Bunny Studios. I've been an artist, illustrator, and teacher for the last 10 years, and I've been using Tombow products for the last three. One of my favorite things to draw and paint is flowers, and I can't wait to show you how to create your own using the Tombow watercolor set. Today we're going to work on some color mixing and blending using jewel brush pens and water. Then we're going to paint several types of flowers and foliage and turn them into one final project, which is a floral wreath. Please share your progress as well as your finished work with us on social media by tagging Tombow USA, Brown Paper Bunny, and using the hashtag Learn with Tombow. In today's workshop, you're going to be using the Tombow watercolor set, Strathmore watercolor paper, and if you'd like to trace the designs from the workbook, you'll need a light pad or to trace up against a window on a sunny day. You'll also need some paper towel for cleaning your water brush. In the watercolor set, you'll find five jewel brush pens that you can use to mix up a variety of colors. The pens included are 885 Warm Red, 993 Chrome Orange, 245 Sap Green, 526 True Blue, and 757 Port Red. You'll also find a 4H mono drawing pencil, which is perfect for sketching out your designs, but light enough that you can paint over the top without it getting in the way. You'll also find a mono eraser for cleaning up those stray pencil lines. And there's a medium water brush for blending the ink. And it's great because you can just fill it up with water and there's no need for messy jars of water and you can take it and paint anywhere with you. So it's super handy. You'll also find a mono twin permanent marker in the kit, which is perfect for sketching out flowers, adding outlines and details. And because the ink is permanent, you can paint right over the top without worrying about it bleeding. There's also a blending palette included for mixing colors, a color mixing chart, and a watercolor guide included in the set. Before we get started with the workshop, you'll want to download the worksheets and print them out if you plan on tracing the designs rather than drawing your own. Before we get started on the flowers, I want to walk you through some color mixing with your jewel brush pens. You can use the mixing chart and color wheel in your watercolor set as a guide, and we're going to play around on a blank piece of watercolor paper to get a feel for how the different colors look when they're blended. To fill out the mixing chart, start by filling in each solid color diagonally where they intersect on a grid. So use your water brush on top to see how the ink looks after you've filled in each square. We're starting with 885 and just roughly filling in the whole square. And then go over the top with your water brush. You can give the barrel a gentle squeeze, make sure the bristles are nice and wet, and then just blend the ink together on your paper. After each color, make sure you clean off your water brush using your paper towel so that you don't accidentally mix colors together that you didn't intend. Next is 993. And then again, use our water brush to blend the ink together on the paper. Clean it off on the paper towel and move on to 249. Blend with the water brush. And use 526 in the next diagonal square. And clean your brush. The last one is 757. Okay, hey. now we're going to mix colors across. So we're going to mix 885 and 993 in both this square and this square. So because you've got two, you can put more of one color in this one and more of the other color in this one to get a feel for how they mix at different ratios. So here I'm putting 
three quarters of the square is filled up with 885 and just one quarter in this box. And then I'm filling in the rest with 993. And then using the water brush, I'm going to blend those together on the paper. Don't forget you can give the barrel a gentle squeeze if you need a little bit more water. Clean your brush in between and then blend the next square. So you can see how different the two colors can look depending on how much you add of each one. Clean off your brush and then move on to the next square. So now we're going to mix 885, which is this one, and 249 in the square here and the square here. This chart will be a really handy guide when we move on to painting our flowers. You can choose your colors based on the mixes that you liked. Now we're moving on to um, 885 and 526. Now we're moving on to 885 and 757. Okay, now we're going to be working on 993 and 249. Okay, next is 993 and 526. And next we're doing 993 and 757.
Okay, next we're moving on to 249 and 526. Okay, next is 249 and 757. And then the last two squares are 757 and 526. Now you've got a handy colour mixing reference guide that you can use when you're painting. In this lesson we're going to explore a few different painting and mixing techniques. So the first one I want to show you is mixing directly on the paper. So we'll start with 885. You can just lay down some ink on the paper and then use your water brush to blend and mix it together to get a watercolor effect. Then clean your brush. And this time we'll mix 885 and 757 directly on the paper. So just put down some ink and again, use your water brush Give it a little squeeze if you need to make sure the bristles are wet and blend the two colors together on the paper. Get a really nice mixed color. Clean up your brush. And now I'm gonna show you how to mix colors on the blending palette. So we'll use the same two colors, 885. Just lay some ink down on the blending palette and then 757, do the same thing. And then squeeze a little bit of water from the brush onto the ink and blend it together. And then using the brush, you can pick up that color and put it down directly onto the paper. You can create a really nice even wash using the blending palette. And you can see it's a little bit lighter because we mixed the colors and had quite a bit more water. So the more water you add, the lighter the color will be. You can even drop in a little bit of extra color in certain areas and it'll blend and bleed through all of the wet areas. Clean your brush till all the color is gone. Okay, next I'm going to show you how to pull color down to create a gradient. So I'm using 757. I'm just adding ink directly to the paper and then using the brush to wet that ink and gently pull it down the paper till I get a nice gradient. You can go back in. If you want a little bit more color to come down. Clean your brush. And next I'm going to show you what it looks like to 
draw using your dual brush pens over the top of a wash. So we'll use the color we already have on our blending palette. Pick up some more. Create a wash on the paper. And once that dries, we can draw over the top. So you'll wanna wait until the ink is completely dry. And if you're impatient like I am, you can use a heat tool or a hair dryer to speed up the process. Now that this is completely dry, we're gonna draw over the top using our 757 dual brush pen. So I'll show you what it looks like using the brush tip and create thick or thin lines or you can use the bullet tip on the other side to add in details and thin lines. So you can see it has a really nice effect over the top of a wash. Next, I'm gonna show you how to use the Mono Twin Permanent Marker either over or under a wash. So first we'll create some marks on the paper to paint over the top of using the thin edge or the thick. We'll mix up a little bit more color on our blending palette by drawing ink on top and then using the water brush to wet the ink and transfer it back to the paper. So the nice thing about the Mono Twin Permanent marker is it's permanent, so you can really just paint right over the top without it bleeding anywhere. Like so. You can also use it on top of your watercolor. So we'll create a little wash here so I can show you what that looks like. Now we'll just wait for it to dry. Okay, now that it's completely dry, I'm gonna go back over the top with my Mono Twin Permanent Marker. So this is great for adding details to your flowers or line work around the petals, that sort of thing. Okay, now we're gonna move on to flowers and foliage. Now it's time to paint some flowers. You can either trace the flowers from the worksheets onto your watercolor paper using a light box or up against a window on a bright day, or you can draw your own. I've traced this one out in pencil and now I'm going to outline it using the Mono Twin permanent marker before we start painting. You can either use the thin or the thick end. It's your choice. I'm using the thin end for this particular flower. You can then use your mono eraser to erase any of the stray pencil lines. I'm going to show you two main ways to paint your flowers today. And the first is a wash technique, which gives you a real watercolor feel. So we're going to start by mixing up your first color on the blending palette. And I always work from light to dark because it's easier to add color than it is to take it away. So now I'm going to add a touch of 885. a little bit of 993, and some 757. And now mix it together with lots of water. And the more water you add, the paler the color will be. A little bit more water. Okay, now working quickly, we're going to cover our entire flower. You 
you can choose to go outside of the lines on purpose and add a few drops and splotches to give it that real watercolour feel if you like. Now while this is still wet, we're going to mix up a little bit more concentrated colour and we're just going to touch it into a few areas on the wet ink. And you'll see it blend and mix with the colour that we've just laid down. And I just used 757 for this one, but you could mix several colors together if you wanted to. I'm just letting it blend and bleed out into the wet ink. Then I'm gonna let this first layer dry and we'll come back and add some more details. Now that the ink is completely dry, I'm going to go back in with 993 and just add a little bit more color to certain areas. This gives you a little bit more variety in your flower. You want to wait until the first layer is completely dry so that the ink details you're adding don't bleed and, uh, and mix together. For this next technique, it's a little bit more structured and it involves thinking about where there might be shadows on the flower. And you wanna paint each petal individually using the gradient technique that we learned in the last lesson. So I'm using 757 and I think it's gonna be darkest along where the petal meets the middle of the flower. So I'm putting the ink there. I'm going to mix in a little bit of 526 just right on top and then use the water brush to pull the color down and create a gradient. And work your way around, um, try not to work directly next to petals that are still wet unless you want the ink to run together. So adding the ink to the darkest area of the petal and then blending outwards to create a nice gradient all the way to the edge. Just keep going, working your way through each of the petals. We'll repeat this on every petal until the whole flower is done.
going to add a little bit of 993 to the center of the flower and mix it with just a touch of 757. And then blend it together with the water brush. And once your entire flower is completely dry, you can come back in and add details um, directly with the dual brush pens. So now that it's completely dry, we can go back in and add a few details with the dual brush pens. I'm going to use 757 just to add a little bit of vibrant color to a few areas on here. Just give a little bit of definition to these spots. You can use the brush tip or you can use the bullet tip for adding details. A little bit of 993. I'm using the bullet tip just to add a little bit more color into the center. And now we're ready to move on to our final project. For our final project, we're going to create a floral wreath. You could use this on its own as a piece of art. You could letter someone's name inside or maybe a favorite quote, or you could paint smaller wreaths onto handmade cards. So to start, you're going to need your design either drawn in pencil or permanent marker. And you can either draw your own or you can trace the one that's provided in the worksheets. If you are drawing your own, I recommend starting with a light circle first, and if you don't have a steady hand, an upside down bowl works really well as a template. And then place your largest and most open flowers on the circle and then fill in with smaller flowers. And then lastly, add in some leaves and foliage around the edges. To start, we're gonna paint these largest flowers first with the wash technique. And then we're going to drop in some concentrated color. So let's begin by mixing up some color on our blending palette. I'm using some 885 and some 757. Then use your water brush to mix those two together on the blending palette. And remember, the more water you add, the lighter the color will be. And then we're going to apply a nice even wash over our largest flowers on the wreath. Now we're going to add a little bit of concentrated 757, just in a couple of areas. So use your water brush to pick up the ink and then you can just touch it into the wet ink on your flower. And we're going to repeat this step on the other open flowers, starting with a nice wash, and then we'll drop in some additional color. You can add additional colors too, like maybe a little bit of 993. Just make sure to clean your brush first and then pick up the ink from the blending palette and just drop it in the middle and it will blend out into the wet ink. I'm just gonna keep working around, adding washes to the biggest flowers.
I'm going to drop a little bit of 885 into this flower that we've just completed. Just for a little bit of variety, variation in the color. I'm just going to let it spread through the wet ink. Now we're going to wait for these flowers to dry before we go back in with additional washes and adding more detail. Now that the ink is completely dry, we can go back in with an additional wash to add some more color and a little bit more depth. So I'm going to use my 757 on the blending palette again. And this time I'm going to add just a touch of 993. Blend that together with the water brush. You can add that as kind of a shadow where the petals meet and it would be darker. Or you can go over all of the petals again. It's kind of up to you just to add a little bit of additional color. I'm just continuing around adding a little bit extra color to each of the petals on all of our open flowers. I'm going to start on the smaller buds and details and then the leaves. Now I'm going to start on the leaves and I'm going to mix some 249 with a little bit of 993. You can add more or less yellow depending on if you want the leaves to be lighter, darker. I'm going to give them a wash before going over them again to add a little bit more detail once they're dry. Now I'm mixing a little bit of 757 with 249 and I'm going to add a lot of water to lighten it up and just make a pale sort of purpley grey to use on these leaves here. On these leaves here, I'm going to use the technique where we pull the color down to create a gradient. And I'm going to use 249 and just a touch of 757. So you add the color at the base of the leaf, mix in a little bit of this one, and then use the water brush to pull the color down to fill in the rest of the leaf. So I'm getting the ink ready on all of the leaves and then I can just go back in with the water brush and blend them down. For these really tiny leaves here, I'm going to draw directly with 249 onto the leaves and then use the water brush to go over the top and blend the ink.
I might even add in just a touch of 993 onto each leaf. And just use the water brush to blend those two together. Once the ink is completely dry, you can go back in with your dual brush pens and add some more detail, a little bit more color in certain areas. So I'm using the 993. I'm just adding a little bit of color to the center of my largest flowers. And then I'm going to add a little bit of 993 to these leaves over here for a little bit of color variety. Now I'm going to use 885 to add a little bit more pop of color to these berries on the side. You can add as many or as few details as you like. And look, now we have a finished wreath. Thank you for joining me in this workshop. I hope you had a lot of fun and learned something new. Don't forget to share your progress as well as your finished work on social media by tagging Tombow USA, Brown Paper Bunny, and using the hashtag LearnWithTombow. See you again soon.